Good evening, we are from Ukraine. Congratulations to all Ukrainians. Our country withstood the first most powerful blow of Putin's orcs, and the losses of the enemy are so great that the military leadership of Urukhai is forced to slowly unveil a mountain of corpses shredded by our brave hobbits and elves. Gritting their teeth, Russian generals were forced to publish the following figures, 1,351 Russian soldiers were killed, 3,825 were wounded. At the same time, Defense Minister Shugu and Chief of the Russian General Staff Gerasimov disappeared from television. According to the Russian intelligence services, such a death toll can justify a large number of military funerals in Russia. And do not forget about mobile crematoria and mass graves. Russians are deceiving you. At least 15,000 of your soldiers died in Ukraine, and at least 30,000 were wounded, missing and captured. And all these military men are mostly snotty skinny conscripts who were not supposed to fight at all, but fight, die and are captured. Не так, не так. Welcome to Ukraine, сука! In addition to the video, we have SBU radio interception, confirming that it is the snotty conscripts who are fighting. Yesterday a rocket fell on us. Six wounded, one killed. The entire transport was destroyed. Only two trucks and two tanks remained. All wheel transport was broken. Windshields, wheels, tanks, were left without food and ammunition. Nothing at all, no water, no food, nothing. Minus 60% combat readiness at least. А снаряды все, все, все снаряды, еда, еда, все вообще, просто ничего нету. А, без еды, без снарядов остались? Вообще, да, вообще ничего нету, ни воды, ни еды, ничего. Минимум 60% боевой готовности минус. There are 30 of us left here, only rifles. If there were no trenches, everyone would have perished. The guy broke all the bones, even the painkillers did not help him, Promodor. The pains were terrible. Now we are surrounded. Clear. Find a car and get out of there. You're not the kind of fighter who can do that. Talk to the commander, explain that you will not go into this meat grinder. I watch in Telegram that Nikolev is being shelled. Я вот как не захожу в телеграм, Николаев раз They cannot take Nikolaev, there is no equipment, no people, nothing at all. To take this city, you need 20,000 people, how will we take it? We have nothing to do here, no one here wants to serve, no one at all. At the same time, the official Russian media involuntarily confirmed the Ukrainian statistics. And do you know how? RIA News announced that 14,000 Ukrainian soldiers have been killed in Ukraine. Okay, let's assume that's true, and then open a military textbook, which says that for every soldier killed in the defense, the attackers lose three. If degenerates attack, then four. Now let's calculate, if 14,000 Ukrainian soldiers were killed, it turns out that the irreparable losses of the Russian Federation will amount to 56,000 killed and 224,000 wounded.
For obvious reasons, I multiplied by four, not three, because it was the degenerates who attacked. Thus, it turns out that Russia's losses in Ukraine today would be 34,000 more than the entire Russian group in Ukraine. I repeat once again, there were 190,000 of you, but at the same time, taking into account official information, there would have been 56,000 killed and 224,000 wounded. This simple arithmetic destroys Russian propaganda with ease. Take a calculator and check everything. Let me also remind you that in total, 190,000 Russian soldiers invaded Ukraine along with dogs, prostitutes and degenerates. They entered in several columns, and the longest stretched for 40 miles. In parallel, the Russian Federation put forward an ultimatum, the overthrow of the power of drug addicts and clowns, denazification, demilitarization, the neutral status of Ukraine, as well as Russian as the second state language. In the second echelon of Russian columns was the Russian Gestapo, the police, whose goal was to eliminate Ukrainian activists. They were preparing to destroy everything pro ukraine Ukrainian. A few days after the invasion, a parade was planned in Kiev, which was supposed to be performed by a fan of Putin, singer Gazmanov, who now has problems with a hernia and unfulfilled Israeli citizenship. I am voicing all this now for the Russian audience, for which every day is Groundhog Day. Russian propaganda erases their memory and RIA News plays an important role in this. For example, last night it turned out that the picture in their heads had changed. I quote, the combat potential of the armed forces of Ukraine has been significantly reduced, which makes it possible to focus the main efforts on achieving the main goal, the liberation of Donbass. Initially, we did not plan to storm the cities, Kiev, Kharkov, Chernigov, Sumy and Nikolaev, in order to prevent destruction and minimize losses among personnel and civilians. Although we do not rule out such a possibility. End of quote. Guys, you weren't going to take Kharkov, you weren't going to surround and storm Kiev, and you certainly weren't going to bomb Marupol, where tens of thousands of people had already died. By the way, pay attention, no one calls Zelensky a clown and a drug addict anymore, talk about denazification and demilitarization has disappeared somewhere. Perhaps, of course, RIA News is wrong again, but then you would first figure out what is happening inside your country. After a month of war, does anyone in Russia have an understanding of what the Russian government and the military really want from Ukraine? Does anyone know anything about this? Does anyone know what tasks the politicians set for the military, and what results this military operation led to? Russian propaganda offers this explanation, supposedly, all this stupid invasion of all regions of Ukraine was necessary to pin down Ukrainian forces so that they would not interfere with the offensive in Donbass. What a cover operation. It must be a shame for the singer Gazmanov, who had to suspend his tour for the sake of a parade in Kiev, which no one planned. Well, the Russian chipmunk people will soon really switch to collecting roots and acorns, and all this for the sake of the mythical liberation of Donbass from the mythical Nazis. Idiots still blame Ukraine for bombing Lugansk and Donetsk for eight years. Dudes, now there are street cameras everywhere, so send me a video from Donetsk and Lugansk, and I will send a video from Marupol and Kharkov. And we will compare the destruction for eight years and for one month. And now is the time to tell where this wonderful term came from, the chipmunk people. It was not I who decided to offend the Russians, not at all, 
There is such a writer Alexander Prahanov, he is over 80 years old and started as a journalist, but recently joined the ranks of Russian national patriots. And now the quote, I need to read it in full, because only a rebellious brain can come up with such a thing. I quote, the Russian people will survive, they will leave the cities for fields and forests, they will pick mushrooms, berries, nuts. The Russian people are ready in a moment of great sorrow to turn into a chipmunk people, they will store roots and onions for the winter. End of quote. Beautiful, isn't it? The same Prahanov once wrote that he dreams of dying in a burning Russian tank in Kiev. I have a question, comrade Prahanov, you had the opportunity to burn yourself in Bucha or Irpin. This is certainly not Kiev, but still close. Why did you miss your unique chance? After all, it will be no more. Он больше никогда для вас не повторится. Тем не менее, как пророк Александр Проханов and this is what will happen, the prophecies of Prahanov will begin to come true. Soon the chipmunk people will reveal themselves to the world. All those duck-lipped chicks, may bark philistines, they are all very sad. Yes, there is still money, but may bark has already left. What separates the beauty from the beast? Botox and depilation. Just don't accuse me of objectifying women, because we are talking about the tastes of Russian Philistines, and Russian Philistines need women with depilation and Botox. But now that the Maybach is no longer available, they will have to lure the female with toilet paper, rot front candy, and fake Chanel perfume. And all this will be in short supply, like sausage in the Soviet Union. I know that this is not a popular idea in Ukraine, but there are still decent people left in Russia. And these people are not from Moscow and do not have to be from Moscow. For example, the deputy of the district council of the Voronezh region Nina Believa. She is a member of the Communist Party that supported the war in Ukraine. But this did not stop her from speaking out against the opinion of the party and Putin. I am against the decision taken by the President of the Russian Federation and against the actions that are being taken today on the territory of the sovereign state of Ukraine. I consider this to be a war crime. And what about our soldiers who give their lives so that we live here in peace and raise our children? How do you feel about our dead soldiers? You are confusing something, you have false information. No one attacked our country, so they had their lives, and tomorrow no one would have attacked, the propagandists put it in your head. There is no real evidence that Ukraine planned to attack our country. No, no, there is no such evidence, just empty claims. And there are no Nazis. It is strange, very strange to prove to people that a Russian-speaking Ukrainian of Jewish origin can be a Nazi. What must be in the mind of a person to say such a thing? The disturbing news came from the social network TikTok. From this day on, Russians cannot upload videos to this social network even if they use a VPN. Thus, another propaganda channel of the Russian Federation is closed, and the soldiers from Chechnya are completely demotivated. Without heroic TikTok videos, they have no reason to be in Ukraine, because they didn't come here to fight. And now international news. I would like to offer my condolences to the Japanese people, who the other day had to listen to another pseudo-historical lecture from a poorly educated KGB officer.
In this lecture, he told the Japanese that they did not understand a damn thing about World War II and that textbooks and Hollywood distorted the true story. Of course, everything ended with the mention of his colleague Adolf Hitler, but at the same time, the KGB officer did not conduct a general analysis of the mistakes. It's a pity. After Putin's complaints about Japanese history textbooks, Russian troops began artillery exercises in the Kuril Islands. For a KGB officer, I sue me Mason in front of the Japanese people, but for the fact that you are diverting part of the Russian army, I am very Doma Arigato to you. And of course, we all know very well that Crimea is Ukraine, and the Kurils are Japan. Nippon Ichiban. Let's continue. Having lost only 1,300 people in Ukraine, Russia is beginning to move its troops from hotspots. The Gyumri military base in Armenia, then Georgia, Abkhazia, and Skinvali, from there the Russian military is now being transferred to Ukraine. There are already first results, in the absence of Russian so-called peacekeepers, Azerbaijan again develops the offensive and enters the cities and villages occupied by Armenians. And the Russians can do nothing about it, because there are very few of them left there. The program to transfer Syrian fighters to Russia also failed, as expected, because the Russians cannot even transfer food for their troops 20 miles across the border with Ukraine. And we expected that they would deliver 20,000 Syrians with hookahs and hashish by plane. It was an absolutely ridiculous story. Of course, for television news, they can bring here a couple of hundred Middle Easterners. Lightly armed, like the Chechens, even without body armor. Dudes who can run back and forth and drive pickup trucks and shoot. The problem is that there are already dudes in pickup trucks who know how to fight. And they are not Syrians. I will show you where they were going to attack Belarus from. And if six hours before the operation. The good news is that although we are being bombarded with missiles from the territory of Belarus, and Russian planes are taking off from there, the Belarusian army has not yet entered the war. We will still pay for rockets and planes, and we are very grateful for these wonderful memes. And now I am compelled to publish a refutation of what I said yesterday. It turns out that the Ukrainian military did not sink the ship Orsk. It was the ship Saratov. Let's watch the video. Four landing ships of the Black Sea Fleet on the Sea of Azov, hit in the port of Berdyansk, are not able to perform their intended tasks. Two of them are disabled permanently. On the morning of March 24, the large landing ship Orsk was completely destroyed by a direct blow, ammunition detonated on board. The large landing ship Saratov suffered from a severe fire, after which the crew sank the ship to a depth of 5 m at the berth to put out the fire. The large landing ship ships Novokokask and Kunikov also suffered from the fire and managed to get out of the impact with damage. Thus, all four landing ships of the Russian Federation in the Sea of Azov are not capable of performing tasks. Two of them forever. A representative of the office of the President of Ukraine confirmed that the Ukrainian army destroyed the Saratov ship after a strike on Russian ships in Berdyansk. According to him, there were 20 tanks, 45 armored personnel carriers and 400 personnel in the destroyed landing ship. That's all. Victory will be ours, glory to Ukraine.